Hey guys, it's Axiomatic Uncertainty here, and today I'm going to be recording the seventh tutorial video uh, for, you know, in the Unity Car Physics uh, series. And today we're going to be handling um, just the speedometer as suggested in the comment section at one of the previous videos. Um, so, you know, I'd already planned to do that, but I just decided to move it up a bit given uh, the request. So, in order to do this, uh, we're not going to be running like a, you know, speedometer like you, you might see in like a car. So like, like we're not going to be running a typical like analog speedometer like uh, this one that I just pulled up here. Uh, instead, we are going to be using uh, just a simple UI. Uh, and the way which we're going to do this is going to be shown here. So the first thing I'm going to do is uh, just Open, create a new UI object and that's going to be a text mesh pro text um, you can use uh, like any other type of element but obviously since we're doing a speedometer I'm just going to choose text um, you're going to have to import some stuff for this uh, I've already done that in the past so I don't have to um, you know and I did it on this project as well just testing everything to make sure that it works um, but you you should definitely make sure that you get that all imported before you move on um, because obviously you know nothing will work if you don't have this um, so now that we have that imported you can see that we now have this text showing over our car um, and on the screen and uh, what we can do actually is you can see like if I move this uh, nothing actually changes about any of this and what we can do is we can now actually shift this text over and down and whatnot. So if I move this over, you can see on the game view, which I'm trying to show you down here, uh, this is all sort of sliding around, right? So if I keep moving this, then moves. And if I start playing the game, this does not move regardless of the angles of the objects in the game. So that is perfect. Now all we're going to have to do is we're just going to have to adjust this a little bit. So I'm going to bring this down just so that it's at the edge of the canvas, which you can see here. Um, and I think I'm going to change the color. So I'll make this like a neon green or something, something stylized. Um, just because this is supposed to be a racing game, I don't want it to be, you know, some bland color. Um, so I've chosen this setup, and I'm pretty happy with this. I do want to increase the text size a little bit. But uh, other than that, I would say it's pretty okay. Now we're going to have to move this up again because of that text change. And then the other thing we're going to want to change is, you can see, even though this part is uh, here, it's, it's wrapping to the bottom because this isn't long enough. And instead of it's extending it, uh, an easier thing to do is just to come in here to the wrapping and overflow section and disable that. And now the text does not overflow at all. And it just sits nicely on the screen. And uh, I'm just going to change the default text. You don't have to do this at all. Um, but I will make mine... Uh, let's see. I'll just make my default text. I don't know. 0 mph, right? Uh, and if you if you can't already tell... This is going to be done in miles per hour. Um, sorry, I would use the metric system because it's you know better, I'd say. But uh, I live in America, and so this kind of stuff is just conventional and uh, you know preferable for a lot of people. So, sorry if you are a metric system user. Either way, uh, you'll be able to follow along. And if you want to use the metric system, you can. Uh, and I'll explain how that is going to work uh, in a bit. So. Now what we're going to do is uh, we're actually just going to stub in a new script. So we're going to call this one our UI manager, right? And uh, this is going to handle all of the graphical stuff in the game. Um, so obviously right now we just have, uh, you know, managers for some other stuff uh, such as our camera and whatnot. But right now we need a, uh, you know, UI controllers so that we can actually adjust this stuff in a way which is not, you know, clumping up inside of this car controller script. So we can just save that all and uh, let's just add this script to our canvas. You can see that that is now going to just drop in here. 
perfect. So I'm going to now uh, head up into my script again, and uh, I'm going to get started with this. So I don't think that we're going to need any of this stuff, right? Um, and I'll get to why in a second, but uh, first, let's just go into our car controller and actually add a new thing here. So we don't, we're not going to require this, uh, but we should have it. And uh, what we're going to do is we're going to say public, public, and then we're going to make a reference to a UI manager. We're going to call this uh, UIM, right? And uh, now what we can do is we can just set up sort of what we did down here. Um, so you can see everywhere else we have references to these. In this case, what we want to do is we want to consistently access the UI manager and, uh, you know, essentially call a method in here. So what we're going to do first is in our UI manager, we're going to set up a reference uh, and we're going to do a public, um, actually here first, Okay, so we're going to make a reference to our uh, text mesh, but first we need to actually say using uh, text, or yeah, TM Pro, that's what it is, sorry. So this will you let us use text mesh pro uh, and just interact with its objects uh, within the script. So now we can say public um, text mesh pro UI GUI, right? And let's just call this text. Um, and now that we have this reference, we can actually set up a public, public, static, void, and we'll just call this our uh, change text, change text, right? And uh, let's actually just do that. And we're going to take an input, and it's going to be a float speed. Um, and that's it for that part. Now we're going to need to come into here, and now that we have a reference, we can just add this to our update method. And uh, I don't know why that's there. I want to remove that extra space. Um, so we're going to add a call, and what we're going to do is we're just going to take our UIM, and then we're going to say dot, uh, what was the method name? Chain. Okay, that's weird. Maybe this, uh, one sec. try that there we go so we can now just activate that as you can see we now can change our text we need to input something here so in order to do that we are going to get our reference to the rigid body we're going to, so we're going to call rb dot velocity and uh, actually here here's what we need to do so we need to say we need to get our transform uh, and then say inverse transform vector, right? And the reason for which we're doing this is that right now, uh, let's just do that. Okay, perfect. Uh, so the reason for which we've done this is that right now, if we just take our rb dot velocity dot z from the tuple, um, we're going to end up with our world velocity in the z on the z axis. So like you know, this, right forward. Um, but if the car turns, it's still going to be pointing in this direction. And we don't want that. We obviously want the velocity to be relative to the car's direction of motion. So that's why we've done this inform inverse transform vector. So as you can see here from its description, uh, it transforms a vector from world space to local space. So if we input our velocity, we transform it so that the z direction will now be the direction which the car is pointing. And uh, that's all we need to do in this script. Now we can go back into our UI manager and we can actually just change this stuff around a little bit. So our speed is going to be just fine, but we need to convert it. Um, and so in our case, as I already said, we're going to be converting this to a float uh, and we're just going to call this S uh, and we can just get our speed. We're going to be converting this to miles per hour. So I'm just going to Google miles. I'll just bring this over so you can see it. Per hour to, uh, let's just say, oh, sorry. Um, actually, here, opposite way. 
meters per second to mph. And uh, if we come in here, we can actually now see that this is 2.694. And uh, we'll just copy that, close this all out, and now add this in, right? And we can now get our speed in miles per hour. So this is now going to be equivalent to that speed. Um, so now what we can do is we can actually say text dot text, right? So we're getting a reference to the actual content of the text box, or not the text box, but rather the text mesh. And we can then just add something in here. So first off, we want an MPH, we want a space there, and we want our speed. And we're gonna make this S, but uh, I don't really like that because actually let me just show you what's going to happen here if I am correct about okay oh whoops uh, give me a sec so we need to actually set this text to a reference to object or to an object and then we need to also get a reference for that uh, new script in here if I'm correct we already saved it yeah so we're gonna have to get a reference uh, to that input manager. How am I gonna, I feel like, okay, this is the problem, right? Uh, yeah, actually, that's perfect. So I've never even tried that before. I wasn't sure I was gonna be able to drag that in there. Anyhow, um, I think it should work now. So if we run it, you can see, yeah, so that that's the problem, right? This is perfect, right? We're getting the speed, but it's really ugly really ugly um, obviously you wouldn't want this in your game you just want you know what the user is going to want to see which is miles per hour prefer preferably um, you know rounded off so we're going to actually just say mathf.round on this guy and now we get a nice clean look for our game uh, and I think that this should just be perfect yep so this is beautiful uh, you know, we have a nice rounded value, and you can see if we push over uh, the single digits, it still stretches out, and uh, because we don't have any overflow, the text box looks perfect, and it's all running seamlessly. And uh, you can see if we break, our speed suddenly declines, and we hit zero. Now, there's one issue, um, and I'll just explain that right now, and that issue is that if we go backwards, our speed goes negative, right? And you might be saying, well, you know, why is that even a problem? Um, and I guess, you know, it's it's an issue of personal preference. Um, but in my opinion, you know, having a speed that is that uh, way, you know, just doesn't look good for a game, especially given the fact that most speedometers don't have the option of going negative. Instead, they just flat uh, line at zero and they just remain there until uh, you exceed that speed again. So what we're gonna do here is we're actually just gonna clamp this value, right? And I I don't remember, I feel as if I've used clamp before in these videos. If I haven't, basically we can input a minimum and a maximum float and it'll, you know, essentially just give us the value if it's between those two and if it's equal, greater than or equal to or less than or equal to, you know, the bounds, right? It'll give us that boundary. So, you know, if we're less than zero in this case, uh, it'll just give us zero as our return value. And that resolves all of our issues. So now what we can do is we can actually just make this one like, you know, some speed that will never reach like 1000, um, you know, miles per hour. And uh, we can now play this and, right, it's functioning normally. If we stop though, you'll see that we hit zero and then start going backwards and nothing changes, right? So that is flawless, right? There's nothing uh, wrong with that. If we come into the car, you can see it looks just fine. Uh, the car is swaying a lot, uh, but we'll get to that with the anti-roll uh, stuff and also with, uh, you know, things on just improving the physics in general so i hope that you've enjoyed this tutorial as always if you enjoyed it please remember to uh, leave a like to share and 
to subscribe and then also if you have any feedback questions comments suggestions etc etc leave those in the comments I really do appreciate uh, each and every one of your comments and if you have any ideas for future videos or suggestions on what I should do uh, you know for the rest of this series or just you know what I should have done better remember I will read that comment uh, and I really appreciate being able to get you know real feedback from people so it's definitely helpful um, and yeah I appreciate that so uh, thank you for watching the video uh, and again remember to subscribe and that's gonna be it so stay tuned for the next one I'll probably be posting that tomorrow or something uh, and yeah bye guys